No one puts anything that deep in a city. Why would you? It's deeper than the wall in yeah. Game of Thrones underground. Yeah. Yep. You could do the wall from Game of Thrones, additionally and stack an entire subway system subway from system. London on top of it and still have like another 100 feet left yep. over to put like, a, I don't know, a swimming pool. Hello, everybody, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm your host, Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam. You're also the host. I screwed that up by saying host, which we haven't been doing for so long. But you know what? We're professionals. We're going to keep moving forward. Yeah. We were just talking about the, I was going to say Reddit AMA. No, the Patreon, Patreon. AMA, which seemed to be mid. Hit. I don't know. No, yes. people liked it. People if really wanna, liked it. We, I got to go to Kaveh's uh, studio, which is his house. That's a very generous term. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, studio in, studio in Los Angeles. Yes. I got to go to his house and we did an in-person AMA recording and it's really fun. And we're both off our, out of our minds, tired. It, and yeah, it was it was crazy. It was uh, after we did CatCon and after we and did San Diego, San Diego. Comic Con, <laughs> and after I had had COVID, and after yeah. we had, I had like another job that I was working in between. So basically, like I remember on that recording being like, "Oh, I'm out of my mind. Like I haven't yeah. really rested." Yep, uh, um, it was fun. You you it, it, you like fell apart. <laughs> was, I did. It was fun. Uh, I'm glad that the audience enjoyed it. I don't. Re- yeah. I just remember being very stressed out and being like, "Oh my god, they're gonna see." And at one point, you turned to me and you're like. It's fine. They know yeah. that you're a disaster. Just let yeah. it go. And I was like, I can't. I have to control this more. <laughs> and then you see it in his like his brain working see me, yeah. and his eyes just like, unfocusing. And I'm like, Dude. do not let them see you be weak. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. They're gonna. They're gonna. They already they know. See through it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we do have a Patreon. If you have not yeah. subscribed to it, go ahead and do so, where you can get mid content such as our AMA uh, in my it's- studio. In his studio, it is really fun though. You get to we answer a lot of fun questions about like how what was like starting a podcast or if we annoy each other. That's mm-hmm. a fun one. Fun answer. You're gonna have to learn by yeah. signing up for Patreon and hearing. It. We're not gonna tell you, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we have not recorded an episode for. We were just talking about this. Our schedules have been a little bit off. So three weeks. No, we did one. No, like, two weeks. Last week. No, we what? did two weeks ago. Right. Two anyway, weeks, whatever. Yeah. The point is, is that it's been th- this, yeah. the routine has been thrown off a little bit. So we're both like, I forgot how to do this show. Yeah. But we're. Well, we're I don't uh, know what to do. This is very important that we go back into the routine. Yes. Uh, and make sure that we do this episode as uh, clear minded as possible. Do you yeah. remember? I think last week you went first. And I, went I went first. Yeah. So you go first this week. So I'm going to go first yeah. this week. Is there Lay anything you wanted me. to talk about other than the Patreon before we started the show? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. Join the Patreon. Join the Patreon here mid answers. Okay. So <laughs> you're really hitting that mid home. Mid. <laughs> Look, it's average. So, it's fine. It's fine. So my tab this week is actually once again from a listener email. Really? Yeah. From who this time? Is it Nico from Riverside again? As a matter of fact, it is our boy Nico no from way. Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Dude, where does he find things? In Riverside, I guess. I I, I was I was reluctant to do another one because I was like, we should look at other people's subs. But you know what? Nico, he just sent another cool ass weird one. So I was like, what am I going to do? Not do a cool one just because. Right. Somebody else had one anyway. Anyway, whatever. It's fine. Uh, Nico, thank you again for your tab. Um, So the story begins. On January 29th, 1934, the Los Angeles Times published an article on their front page. And the headline read, quote, Lizard Peelpees Catacomb City Hunted. By the way, that's because they misspelled peoples and no one actually corrected it. (laughs) Peelpees? P-E-O-L-P-E apostrophe S. (laughs) Peelpees. <laughs> Peelpees, all that, yes. <laughs> okay, lizard peel, peoples. Peoples, yes. <laughs> In fact, they meant to write lizard peoples catacomb city hunted. What? Those are just words put together. It's just word salad. That's what happens. Um, yeah. And yes. Lizard people. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> So based on that headline, both in the misspelling and in the insanity, even though it is spelled correctly, that should give you an indication of where the story is headed. Yeah, we're getting weird. It goes on. Yeah, it goes on to state 
Busy Los Angeles, although little realizing it in the hustle and bustle of modern existence, stands above a lost city of catacombs filled with incalculable treasure and imperishable records of a race of humans farther advanced intellectually and scientifically than even the highest type of present-day peoples. In the belief uh. of G. Warren Schufelt, geophysical mining engineer now engaged in an attempt to wrest from the lost city deep in the earth below Fort Moore Hill the secrets of the lizard people of legendary fame in the medicine lodges of the American Indian. End quote. Oh. Are they sure this isn't just the alligator farm? It might be. It actually lines up correctly, right? That's 34. insane. Yeah. That's nuts. All right. So yes. part, help me understand what you just <laughs> said, because I do not understand what you just said. Uh, so this might come as a shock, but uh, this is a story riddled with inaccuracies and incomplete oh, reporting. No. No, 1930s journalism was so, you know, on the level. It's fine. It's great. Um, I tried very hard to gather what information I could, but sadly, this did not seem to be a hugely important story that demanded a lot of follow up from the lamestream media oh, of 1930s you know who that's? LA. The CIA. They're, they're yeah. burying all of this. They don't want us to know. They don't want us to know. And um, <laughs> another disclaimer up front as far as I can tell, these are not lizard people in the conspiratorial sense of the oh. word, like like David Icke's shape-shifting reptilians, because right. I would not have dedicated an entire tab to uh -uh. that bullshit, but uh, <laughs> it's different from that that I will explain. <laughs> right. What, we're not talking about David Icke? Ugh. Thankfully not. Um, yeah, that guy's mind-numbing. Yes, very much so. But this is this is a different thing altogether and, okay. and something that I had not heard about before, despite being somewhat of an LA urban legend, but... Uh, oh, throughout the gosh. course of this story, you will understand why it's total nonsense. I'm so um, excited. Yeah. <laughs> this, is like the, this is like the moon people of L.A. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the main character of our story is a man named George Warren Schufelt. I believe it's Schufelt, S-H-U-F-E-L-T, unless yeah. it's like Schufelt. I'm assuming no, it's probably Schufelt. No, probably Schufelt. Schufelt, yeah. Uh, he was better. a mining engineer, from what I could tell by looking up records, was originally from Ohio. And uh, I don't know much about him beyond that. That's really the only thing you can find on him other than all these articles about this specific incident. Whoa. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Um, there you go. You're going to go into looking uh, records. Like, I'm, I'm going to go into like Latham Brothers style deep reading about him. Oh, yeah. I forgot that the whole Latham Brothers thing that you did. That was hardcore. Yeah. It totally yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. It was a really impressive amount of uh, deep dive researching. One of these days we should do one where we work on it together, I think. I'll teach just you. Just to see. Yeah, because I don't know how to do that kind of research. I only know how to do that kind of yeah, research. Yeah, you're like the, what do they call it? Like the beat reporters, like the ones who like go <laughs> yeah. to City Hall and like look up record. And I'm just that, like, I don't absolutely. care about that. I'm the one who goes and talks to people and like asks yep. them about like, what's this and that? I Ooh, feel like. We should do like an L.A. noir type TV or store, TV show. You and I. He's the one that talks to, the, <laughs> talks to people and she likes to look at records and together. <laughs> They are made. They're fine. Joy <laughs> <laughs> they're like a lot of other people. Yeah, it's not that interesting. They're fine. They are mildly educated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're pretty educated, I just have to say. I know. It's so embarrassing. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're overeducated and I'm a dropout. Both yeah. embarrassing for different reasons. <laughs> Deeply embarrassing. Uh, but anyway, so at some point in the early, early 1900s, uh, Schufelt moves to Los Angeles and he began his career as a professional geology type person geology um, rocks geology rocks and let me tell you this is going to be your favorite part of him this dude loved to dig oh well, of course he digs I should have digging. seen where this is going this is all underground yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. he okay. loved he loved digging so much he even invented a new machine to help him in doing so oh my gosh okay yeah and beginning in late 1933 he was surveying the L.A. area for deposits of oil, gold, and other valuable mm. materials using his new invention called a radio X-ray. <laughs> okay, that sounds real. It's definitely real, and there's definitely a bunch of patents and articles that I found about it online because really? it was definitely... Or, no. <laughs> oh, okay, I was like, wait, really? You did that research. That's awesome. I tried. I couldn't find it. <laughs> That's not real then. No, definitely not. Also, I don't think you shoot radio waves into the ground. You're no, supposed that to shoot no microwaves sense. into the ground to see where stuff is. Radio uh, waves, that doesn't make any sense. 
<laughs> yeah, I thought about going the extra mile and asking my father about this, um, but oh. I was not prepared to get a ten-hour uh, lecture about the science oh. of how you shoot rays into the ground to find stuff because I know that that was part of something he did at work. Um, you coming from that fa your mm -hmm. father? That is yeah. No, I'm like wild. I'm dumb dumb artist with like phd <laughs> science father like just being that like is... well let me tell you about like this this and i'll be like oh no i've lost i want to meet your dad you should i want to sit and talk to him. we should have him on the show that would be i thought a about that too it would be a nightmare it would be funny no, it would I... be it would be super dorky uh if we had my dad on the show he'd be like one word answers he'd be like oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. i don't know yeah Maybe... i do that sometimes <laughs> 500 open dads we can have our dads host the podcast <laughs> They would interesting. That'd be interesting. Okay. So anyway, Schufelt claimed he was able to locate gold and other precious resources at great depth using this uh. invention, which operated based on a principle involving electrical similarities between matter and was said to have worked even at a distance of many miles. Hmm. According to LA Times, this was, quote, a sort of advanced dowsing rod. Do you know what this is? Have you oh, heard I of this? Oh, I know what dowsing rod. Oh, oh okay. hell yeah. I, I had never heard of really? this. Really? Yeah, because I live in the real world. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, someone's got to know about dowsing rods or else they'll be lost to history. Yeah, um, if you're like me and you didn't know what dowsing rods are, uh, it's uh, bullshit, basically, is the short yeah. answer. Basically, for those of us who those of us who don't know, it's basically like, uh, what if you took the principle of like a Ouija board? Yeah. And you were like, how would I just do that to find rocks and water, which is and just water. nonsense. Yeah. Uh, you take at least the the uh, the research that I did on the internet, uh -huh. which of course internet based research is always one hundred percent correct. Always. Uh, people take like two L shaped metal rods and uh -huh. they hold them like in front of themselves, and then they walk. And if like you walk around, and apparently like if they start to like cross. Or move in another way. That's like I don't yeah. know, like like the, a direction. Uh, a direction. It's like a yeah. the sources from the ground, like mm -hmm. rays or like pulsating say something or other. Ley lines have a lot to do with it. What are ley lines? Ley lines are like, oh man. Oh no. Uh, how do I explain <laughs> ley lines? No, they're also kind of woo woo woo. You know, like uh, they're supposedly these like electromagnetic pathways that go all around the world and there's certain special things like the nazca lines in peru or i think the nazca peru lines i don't know about are this supposed to, that's you're just blowing my mind that's, right that's now that's an actual thing the nazca lines okay. were a real archaeology thing but like stonehenge is apparently like at a meeting place of a ton of ley lines and same with like big like there's just a, like like they're kind vril. of like you're talking about like a little bit like yeah epicenters of like real epicenters yes and there is like electromagnetic stuff like coming from the earth and stuff but like witches and pagans are like oh yeah this is going to tell us where we can put build our holy sites and then mm -hmm. can i tell you a quick story about yeah i'm listening um, go ahead okay so when i was in i was in when i lived in wales we would go to england every weekend or like yeah. scotland and go see stuff and one weekend we went to avebury stone circle okay. and i think it's in a place called avebury i don't know i fell asleep <laughs> on the bus and woke up and i was there so who knows and these we like I, we went and saw a bunch of stone circles and this one was like gigantic like it went all around the city a little bit mm -hmm. and we got there and there was this dude with a dousing rod oh no and he he had like law he looked like an old hippie uh pagan dude and he was da using his dousing rods by these um stones and I, we were like oh no we gotta talk to him because he saw us he spotted us we he's were like, like here he comes and he was the nicest you know and he was like i just need to let you know that if you touch this stone you can connect to anyone in the world and I was like, okay. okay and yeah. me being me, I'm like, Just like yeah, an let's, avatar. Let's do let's it. Let's do it. And so he put me, had me put my hands on this stone. And I remember it was like 5 a.m. And I was like, what is happening to me right now? I just have to go with it so I can get through this interaction. Yeah. You know? Who did you and talk he, to? You know, I don't even remember. I was just like, yeah, let's say hi to up. my parents. <laughs> and he's like, even dead people. And I was like, bro, do your thing. And then he gave us a design. bunch of like like advice on where which stone circles to go to and when and what ley lines they're on. And I was like, I'm so like tired. In England or like yes. in the world? Oh. No, no, in England. I was like, I'll add, you should add that to 500 open roads, all the different places <laughs> that this guy told you to go to. I should. And he, he gave us a map. He had his, a handmade map. Do you still have it? No, they only, only gave us one. And my Welsh professor kept it. Lame. I should ask him okay. if I can have it. Yeah, I think that'd be that fun was like to see. a very 
very singular memory of like meeting someone that I'm like, you are unlike anyone I've ever met, you know, made a deep impression. So that's my dousing rod story. That's cool. Sometimes it's more important than them being uh, correct or scientifically yeah. accurate. It's we just shared a weird bond. It was fun. Yeah. That's yeah. all we can do on this earth for this little yeah. time that we have on you. Also, who cares what you believe? Just be nice. Exactly. You know? If you're nice and friendly, that's okay. Anyway, dousing rod. Dousing rods, they'll help you find, you know, rocks, water, dead bodies, I don't know, whatever, buried treasure, uh-huh. old souls, like through the whatever, vril epicenters. Ley lines, yeah. Ley lines. <laughs> it's like all, like you said, it's all mumbo jumbo, mercury is in Gatorade or whatever, some sort of thing. Red Gatorade um, for me. Red Gatorade, mercury right? Mercury is in red flavored Gatorade. <laughs> It's definitely scientifically accurate, and you should absolutely not uh, question it or try and uh-uh. figure out what the science of it is, because it's already figured out. Yeah. By some dude in the middle of a field in England. He's got it. Exactly. So anyway, that's <laughs> that's that. So one day, while taking readings near downtown Los Angeles, Schufelt's instruments revealed what seemed to be a pattern of tunnels. Oh. And they were vast, leading from what is now the public library in the heart of downtown to the top of Mount Washington and then to Pasadena in the north. Oh. It appeared Wait, how do we to be... know this isn't just a hobby tunneler? Um, well, we'll get to the end of the story. Oh, I'll explain to you. Please continue. A hobby tunneler? You mean the person who made the tunnels? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it, it gets a little bit more sophisticated. Oh, yeah, I'm by the way. here. be quiet. Here, I keep forgetting to do this, but here's a picture of him with whatever this contraption is. Um, and he looks deeply Let's uncomfortable see. of Schufelt. <laughs> looks like he has to poo. It does look oh like Oh my gosh, poo. that man's face. <laughs> he, he doesn't look like he's confident in himself at all. Also, that contraption is, I don't even know. Yeah, describe what? it to the audience. What are we even he's looking like, at? S- he's like sitting awkwardly and like glaring at the camera while he's <laughs> holding, he's like resting his hand on this, what it looks like a tube with glass around it on like a camera stand. Yeah, and like it's pointing at the ground like a tripod. Yeah, and there's like a he's holding a cord that's connected to it, and yeah, he's just glaring. He's very yep. annoyed. Um, it looks, I mean, it looks like a thing though. Yeah. As far as like uh, bullshit's concerned, I would be like, okay, that looks <laughs> yeah. like some sort of like a contraption that it looks is like legit. Sciencey. Yeah, anyway, in the aesthetic of it, it does. Yeah. So it appeared uh, to be a well-planned underground labyrinth, which fed into large rooms located at various points with deposits of gold in the chambers and passages. <laughs> okay. That's what he thinks, right? And uh, uh-huh. I mean, clearly, if you're using the high-tech equivalent of holding two rods very still, you've got some irrefutably hard evidence. A- absolutely. And uh, he gets super excited. And he's just like, listen, but you know what? I am excited, but I'm still a man of science. And he can't be sure. So he needs to do more research. Mm, mm-hmm. So how does he confirm the geological aspect of his theories? You want to take a guess? Does he dig? He could. He could have dug. But, you does know, it's he still. Does he ask? I don't know. How, 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 why? I just Keep think going, digging. Ask what? Ask, ask who? the government. Ask the city planner. Ask people who live nearby. Ask the lizard people. Ask Neither, the none cosmos. Of those. No. What he does? He goes to Arizona and he speaks to a Hopi tribal chief. There we go. Okay. Hopi, sorry, not Hopi. Hopi. Hopi, Hopi tribal okay. chief. So he goes to the Native Americans. He All goes right. to the Native American. I don't know why he goes to Arizona to do this. Again, that's the, where a lot of them live. No, no, I just I don't know why from these tunnels he's just like, oh, oh I need to fly to Arizona to speak to a tribal chief. Like I, right. I can't <laughs> seem to find like the connective tissue of what made him do that in the first place. Right. This look, there's no rhyme or reason to this guy. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, so allegedly, a man named Little Green Leaf told Schufelt about the legend of an ancient race of, quote, lizard people. Mm. <laughs> and the story goes like this. About four to 5,000 years ago, an enormous meteor shower spanning hundreds of miles fell across the West Coast. Thousands of people were killed. Crops were wiped out. Homes destroyed. And the forests set ablaze, which frankly just sounds like 2024. But I digress. Yeah. It sounds like sounds fire like season for us. The deep impact survivors regrouped and began plans for a safe that... area to be used as refuge in the event of another uh-huh. catastrophe. Essentially, what we now see tech billionaires trying to make with their underground bunkers, which uh-huh. are dumb, and I hope they all collapse with them in it and, and then, rid yeah. of an entire class of oligarchs. I hope they'll die. Just uh, rid, I didn't say rid that. us of them. Yes. No, I didn't hear anything. No, I definitely didn't say Eat that. Eat the rich. So he's just like, oh, okay. And extrapolating from this conversation with Little Big Leaf, Shufelt was like, bro, 
that's all the scientific evidence I need. <laughs> One person telling you a legend. Perfect. Perfect. It also, <laughs> he felt the subterranean complex he had, quote unquote, discovered was an emergency shelter designed to accommodate up to 5,000 people filled with personal belongings along with historical record and gold treasures. Again, this is all stuff that he essentially he extrapolated from there. this. Oh. Um, eventually, so to, to finish up the alleged myth, uh, disaster inevitably threatened again, but this time the lizard people were prepared and safely hid out in their awesome underground fort and they survived the second meteor shower. However, they were tragically killed by a natural gas leak leaking into the bunkers. Sorry. That's such a horrible ending to that myth. Yeah. They, they were all just gassed. They're all just gassed <laughs> and killed. So all their stuff's there. All their stuff's there. All those tunnels were there for whatever reason over the course of whatever thousands of years. No one discovered it. Nothing ever happened. Nothing, I just, I don't know. Until this guy came along. This makes is the 100% guy. Makes 100% sense. Yeah, yes, it makes sense. Listen, he's special. He is. He was the chosen one. Shoemaker, Schumacher, Schufeld, whatever his name is. Schufeld, yeah. So I'm reading this and my first thought is like, is this actually even part of Hopi mythology, which apparently put me miles ahead of the Los Angeles Times reporting in 1934. Right. You did some research. <laughs> I thought to be like, I should not take this white man's explanation of Hopi mythology at face value, but <laughs> hashtag progress. Hashtag be the change you want to see in the world or whatever. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the Hopi don't appear to be like super online with all of their mythology. Mm. And I mean, there is stuff. There's stuff that you can yeah. find, which is but it's understandable that there's not a whole lot of it available online. Um, I wouldn't. And, you know, if I were them. Yeah, right. But I mean, even just beyond that, like had I had the resources, it would have been interesting to be able to like dive a bit deeper into this. But unfortunately, we are all uh, forced to do this online. So anyway, uh, here's the best of what I could find. Lizards are indeed very important to the Hopi and many Native American tribes in general. Do you know a lot of this cool. already? Is this something no, that you've done times before? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't either. No. Um, the deserts cool. of the American Southwest are famously harsh and unforgiving, and yet lizards survive. Uh, they, sur they seem to proliferate and survive without issue. Uh, they're able to easily hide during the day and find, find ways to survive during the night. Yeah. And, of course, another remarkable aspect of lizards is their advanced ability to heal. Many lizards can lose and regrow their tails or other parts of their body, sometimes even multiple times throughout their lives. Oh, and whoa. shedding their skin. I mean, you've heard about like lizards getting their tails cut off or whatever. And then yeah, I find lizard fine. tails in my backyard constantly because my cats are always like Messing hunting with them. lizards and then they just drop their tails. And so my cats will leave little lizard tails at the door. I'm like, great, thanks. As a gift. They're like, here you go. As a gift. Here's, Here's some your floss. lunch. <laughs> Ew. Be honest, Hannah. How many lizard tails have you eaten? Lizard tail. Yeah. Look, I don't. Uh, uh, is this an intervention? <laughs> I won't stop. I won't stop eating them. I'm told I can stop whenever I want, but I won't. I won't. So you need to stop eating lizards. It's not no. appropriate for your neighborhood. <laughs> I actually got a call. They're from making me your, powerful. Yeah, your neighbors got together outside your house, and they were like, "There she is. There's the one eating all the lizard tails." <laughs> we already get mad at her about her weeds, and now she's eating our lizards. Oh, now it Killer. all makes sense. You've let the weeds grow so that you can bring all the lizards in so you can eat them. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Disgusting, Hannah. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> That's, look, who among us? Um, no refuting. Go on. Anyway, additionally, shedding their skin to grow can also be seen as a form of healing and renewal. Um, so perhaps it's no surprise that native tribes would look to the lizards for inspiration and see yeah. a lizard out and about and considered... And if you see a lizard out and about, it's considered good luck in a lot of tribes. Yeah. So there is a big reverence for lizards and their sort of, I guess, spiritual value or whatever you might want to say, or an inspirational value, which, yeah, frankly, I hadn't really thought about before um, uh, doing the research for this. And that kind of tracks to me. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I would also yeah. be like, if I live in the Southwest, I'd be like, these things are awesome as shit. Yeah. Um, they can essentially Tricks. like grow, grow new body parts and like they right. live and it's fine and a super um, part of your everyday life like that's yeah. like similar to most cultures they you know animals from their region are make a huge appearance in their myths and stuff like yeah like uh bears in england and what is it jaguar jaguars no panthers in guatemala i can't remember there's like a okay. big cat that's really like important to like mayan mythology mm -hmm. it's just because it was around <laughs> But also, like, makes sense. You're like, oh, that's how you're like, oh, well, if that thing can survive in this place, then yeah. so can I. Kind so of like can we. A, yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. 
Um, cool. But nothing about lizard people per se or underground tunnels or meteor showers. Oh. Sidebar, I did briefly read about Hopi mythology concerning the four worlds and a oh, spirit yeah. called Spider Grandmother, which looked Whoa. absolutely metal as shit. Awesome. And I had to use all my strength to not go full into oh. that because I was like, I have to put that on the I shelf. Keep this. Yes. I was later. like, I'm going to keep this on the shelf for later because I was and like, by shelf, I mean, hold in your on. open tabs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shelf. <laughs> I'm like, just the name Spider Grandmother. Yeah. I was like, excuse me? What? Like, that, that is a clickable that is like hours into a big deep hole and even just like a quick like image search i was like oh hell yes yeah uh, but oh, i didn't excited. do it I, I didn't engage Good i just you. was Good like job. i'm gonna save this because this is nothing to do with what we're talking about but it's awesome yes one day i will do hopefully a deep dive because i don't really know kind of like we were saying earlier i don't know much about any of native american creation stories so i'd be curious Me to get into it you so think stay we, tuned. Sh- we should Honestly, yeah. we, we should Honestly, know these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, double chicken, sidebar. Yeah. <laughs> the 1982 film Koyona Scotsi, which I'm sure you've never heard of. <laughs> nope. Uh, even amongst film people, that's like a very filmy film. Uh, it's apparently a Hopi term, meaning life out of balance, and references the three Hopi prophecies, the first of which is, quote, if we dig precious things from the land, we will invite disaster, which... Leads me to further believe that lizard people digging gigantic tunnels across half the city of Los Angeles uh-huh. wouldn't drive super well with no. that whole deal. No. <laughs> Again. I mean, they're I, not wrong. Right. I, I mean, I, I, right. Like. I. It's hard to know how much he even spoke with this chief, if that, if that was even like a real thing to begin with. Right. Right. If he even talked to somebody, or if he just made I don't it up. know. It might have just been like a thing that he made up where he's like, Yeah, I spoke to this Indian and he told me all this stuff. And people are like, What? I don't know. But anyway, if if you're listening to this, and ideally, if you're a, a, a Hopi tribal leader or someone from that tribe that's familiar with this mythology and can clear some of it up, please email us at 500opentabs at gmail.com. It would please. be super cool to know a little bit more. Maybe we can even, I don't know, I'm just putting this out there. If there's somebody who knows a lot, it would be cool to do like a Patreon exclusive interview Ooh. where you could just info dump on us and tell us all about that stuff. Hannah and I would be super duper into it and uh, to know yeah. the facts. Or if you know somebody in the Hopi tribe that they can yeah. help us out. Just putting it I, out there to the listeners. Please, I would love that. Yeah, it would be really exciting to see it. Um, more to come, more to come. Anyway, so Shufel goes back to LA with his quote unquote hard proof. And he decides to do one last survey with his radio x-ray. Oh, okay. this time. Right now, somehow, I don't know what he did. He like he had a kajigger, like he tweaked the mm-hmm. knobs and did a thing. And then he was like, I'm inspired by he inserts like lizard coordinates for it or something. I don't know. Something <laughs> that he didn't have before. Button on yeah, the, the lizard. But now that I know to look for like the lizard readings on here. It's like there was yeah. a lizard button this whole time. This whole time. Right. <laughs> The lizard setting. Uh, this <laughs> time, setting. he claims to find a treasure room on Fort Moore Hill, where the Los Angeles Unified District headquarters is now, beneath the intersection of 2nd Street and Broadway. Okay. Additionally, the entire map now apparently is like in the shape of a lizard, is what he thinks, is what he Amazing. <laughs> so, so they made sh- a, an underground tunnel system in the shape of their own body? Apparently, yes. That's like the time I walked through a corn maze in the shape of David Archuleta's head. That uh, is a reference lost on me, but that's You don't know cool. who David Archuleta is? Please don't make fun of me for not knowing who David Archuleta is right now. He was just, yeah, you know, I think I only know because he's Utah. And he goes, he won, he like won some voice competition or something. Anyway, they made a corn maze in the shape of his head and I walked through it. Some voice competition, like from like a TV show, like the yeah, like American, like American Idol, Idol type thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm so old. I'm sorry. I don't know. I never uh, I just, know. I only know him because he's Utah. That's literally the only reason. Also, so okay. So here's a drawing of the map. I I don't, you know, I don't know an artist. I don't really see the the lizard shape exactly. Let's see. Oh, that is not a lizard. I don't. I don't exactly. I'll tell understand. you that. What Maybe are they talking just, about? I don't know. I don't know what any of this stuff means. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pointing out all the gold. Old Will's house. Does it look this like kind anything? Of a cool map. No, <laughs> looks like a bunch of tunnel system. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know, but there appears to be a lot of gold, a lot of gold everywhere. A lot, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I don't know. He's just like too cool. Like we said, the lizard setting on the microwave was perfect, and that all worked <laughs> out. So 
I'm going to take this all the way to the top. <laughs> I just picture putting a lizard in a microwave. It's not fun. Oh, no, I'm that's not what I meant. <laughs> deeply picture. I'm just picturing it now. No, on his on his microwave that's going into the ground to find no, lizard I don't. And stuff. The one I said earlier, but then I was like, oh, what would happen? Yes. And then now I don't feel good. I don't it's feel okay. good anymore. So, I, I don't. I never feel good. So he takes all this. Yeah. And he goes to the city of Los Angeles and he's like, bro. Like, you really, are you going to say no to what's clearly extremely believable? <laughs> it's obvious. The machine and I made up told me. Told me this, as did this random dude in, like, three states away who may or may not exist. <laughs> and I may or may not have said these things. I may or may not have even talked to him. <laughs> but I've never been to Arizona, but that doesn't mean I didn't talk to someone there. Through perhaps a machine. more unbelievable. Anyway. Perhaps more unbelievable, Los Angeles County authorized the dig as long no. as they got 50% of whatever treasure was found. <laughs> oh, is that the most LA thing I've ever heard? Yeah, They're as like, long as you great. give us Go half for it. of it. Dig yeah. under our city. We don't care. That's nuts. Yep. <laughs> and <laughs> Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. All right. I love the 50 50. He's like, Here's the plan. We split everything 50-50 right down the middle. Right. Schufelt was given permission officially to drill down to 1,000 feet. What? I don't have any idea how far down <laughs> 1,000 feet. Like, I don't know what's down at 1,000 feet in the middle of the city. Is that a thing? Uh, I'm assuming like like the LA Metro and stuff, right? Maybe. That's I don't even a think feet. that's a thousand. Well, maybe. You know, I have no idea. I don't have so. any concept of, of how deep that is. But really quick, thousand I'm seems gonna like a look lot. Up, I'm going to look up. Uh, um, how far? Oh, that's so deep, dude. Um, so the subway's in New York. The deepest station is 173 feet. Are you shitting me? No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so that's a thousand like three. <laughs> Hold on. How deep what? have we dug? Okay, so the biggest hole we've ever dug is in Russia, and it's four thousand feet. So okay. the subway is like. Barely under the ground. Yeah. Turns out. Well, I mean that makes sense. I, I know the I underground. I yeah. I mean, I guess like I don't know, man. Shit. Okay. So the London Underground is 192 feet. Damn. This is 200 yeah. feet. That's it. So this is like That's five nothing. times as much. <laughs> this is so much more. It's an absurd. <laughs> like no one puts anything that deep in a city. Why would you? Why would you dig a tunnel that far down? Yeah. Okay. I do know anyway, that the wall yeah. in Game of Thrones is 700 feet. It's deeper than the wall in yeah. Game of Thrones underground. Yeah. Yep. You could do the wall from Game of Thrones, additionally stack an entire subway system subway from system. London on top of it and still have like another 100 feet left yep. over to put like a, I don't know, a swimming pool. I bet like the city it, was just like, sure, yeah. dig. <laughs> we like to see you dig a thousand feet. Go for it. Shoot, it's funny. I didn't even think to check to see. I just because I always have like this warped idea of like I don't understand like how big a thousand feet is, but mm -hmm. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Schufelt went to work garnering the attention of the aforementioned LA Times again. So they're like, "Oh, this idiot's about to drill a thousand feet into the ground. Let's figure out what's going on here." And you know, he gets into it. He gets all of his like pickaxes and buckets and he's got like a cool helmet with a light on it and he's probably wearing coveralls and I don't really know what the hell people do when they're when they're digging I'm assuming I guess I, go sounds... I black out and just do it you just black out you don't have you're just like wearing your regular clothes and you're I turn Doc into Martins. like yeah my my horrible dog Martins if you want to see an up close and personal <laughs> view of those hideous things watch our Patreon uh, AMA <laughs> it made you lean away from me it's true they did not smell great um anyway <laughs> He does it, right? And yes. he's going at it for a couple of weeks and he's digging and he's digging and he's making the whatever, like putting the, the wood on the walls and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have yeah. a picture of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he doing it alone or does he have a team? I can't no, remember. No, no. He's got a say. team. He's got a few people with him. Okay. He's not just totally solo. He's gotten, he's gotten some money at some point. Okay. I keep getting notifications from the Discord. Everyone in there is arguing about Taco Bell right now. As we what speak, they, they're arguing or they're just like talking. They're, they're no discussing argues. whether. Well, oh, one person's like, it's not Mexican food. That's where you're, that's your first mistake. Oh, no. Things are getting. Should heated. I check on the discord while we record? <laughs> <laughs> this is so. So. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? <laughs> no, everyone's Do we have to just break a, up a fight. No, everyone's just like, hey, so I don't actually like Taco Bell. And oh, then no, other people are the like, revolt. get out. What, what's wrong with you? I think it's all in fun. Um, I'm leaving. Okay. 
Look at that hole. Holy God. Holy, holy gosh. Holy like gosh. That. Okay, so this these like four men are all standing around, and it looks like they're using one of the machines to like see where to dig. Which is just like a weird like radio with like a yeah. wire that goes into a like a shit bucket is what it looks like. <laughs> it does. Like if you're going camping and it's one of those like buckets you bring. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's that's what they're doing. They're digging. Humans are so dumb. We're so dumb. Okay, so it goes for a couple of weeks and eventually he hits something. Oh, and this ooh. is a line from from one of the articles is his exploratory shaft <laughs> eventually reached a depth of 250 feet. <laughs> Uh, I just like exploratory the word exploratory shaft. shaft. <laughs> and he reaches 250 feet, which is deeper, deeper than the underground. Than the underground. Guess what he hits? What? Gold? Take a guess. Better. Lizards. Better. Ro- rocks. A bunch Go- of mud and water just starts pouring uh, in. Oh, <laughs> I do love mud and water, dude. Mud, water. It's a good combo. Dirt and yeah. water. Dirt and he water. Finds some mud. He's, we hit the water table, is what you're saying. Basically, yeah. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> and okay. the time, and literally, the Times is like, oh, okay, this idiot is pff, whatever. Yeah. Uh, he's at best an idiot. At worst, he's a scammer. So they're oh, like, yeah. bye. Interesting. But nevertheless, she persisted. <gasps> he, per- he, hey, listen to men. He persisted. <laughs> <laughs> Shufelt persisted. went down. For an additional 100 feet, reaching what? a final descent of 350 feet. That is so deep. Yeah. Whoa. Before they had to stop drilling for fear of a cave-in. And well, just yeah. like that, the Underground Lizard Cave People Project was DOA. No. Shortly after, the project was suddenly stopped and abandoned. And on March 5th, 1934, the shafts were filled in and the contract <laughs> with the city was canceled. Neither gold nor any other treasure was ever turned over to the county of Los Angeles, and Shufelt disappeared, Ooh. and he wouldn't pop up again until 1957 with the announcement of his death in North Hollywood. <laughs> he just, just noped out, just completely disappeared. disappeared. I would. If I, did, yeah. if I dug 350 feet underground, and a bunch of people were like, okay, where are the lizard caverns? I'd be like, I have to leave. Nope. Yeah, I, I have no to go now. My planet again. needs me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. In North Hollywood, you said he lived there? Uh, or he died there. I don't know if he lived uh, there. I don't know what was going on. Um, I haven't found his grave yet. But again, if you want uh, to find huh? it, maybe it's something I can find that's close by. I might. And with him died the dream of finding the totally plausible and definitely not made up story of LA's <laughs> underground lizard tunnels. <laughs> yeah, I want to find him. We will. We will. Okay. okay. It's a real thing. Anyways, um, thank you to Nico from Riverside for yet another yeah. cool, insane story. I feel like we should make a trip out to Riverside to buy him. I think so. Absolutely. Um, but, How far uh, away is Riverside from where you are? Uh, it's probably like an hour and change. That's like an it? hour and 45 minutes, maybe an hour and a half. Okay. Next time I'm coming down there, we got to go hang out with Nico. Yeah. Thank you, Nico. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That's basically it, though. That's all. We never found him. Never found the lizard people. Never found gold it remains to be seen uh but i actually don't think uh hot take i don't think it exists no i don't think i don't think it's real i don't think it's a real thing no uh i here's what i love about la is -hmm. that that can be part of its history and it's just a blip just a blip on its history not even the dumbest thing that's happened. that place (laughs) yeah that's not even close to the dumbest thing that's happened dude the alligator farm that existed at the same time as this, and that existed at the same time as like the Hollywood becoming a thing. Yeah, it's it wild. continues to be dumb because some other dumb idiot wanted to make a bunch of tunnels under Los Angeles. Who's a <laughs> dumb idiot who sucks mm, yeah. and is bad Maybe at Elon. everything. Maybe Elon will find the, the lizard people. Maybe he is one. Maybe, but not. Oh, and then the other thing I should say is apparently even within the Hopi tribes, they're like, yeah, lizard people were never a thing. That was just like a term apparently that they used to be like, yeah, it's we like lizards and we referred to them as this because it was nice. But like there's no mention no. of any of that. Again, no. if you do know anything about it, ideally, if you're a person who's a uh, representative of the tribe or, or uh, from the yeah. tribe, we would I'd love, love to hear. hear from you. We would absolutely love to hear from you. The actual stories. The actual stories of this. 500 open tabs at gmail.com. That's 500. Let us know and uh, maybe we can set something up. Or if you want to just give us a little blurb or uh, email submission, that'd be cool, too. Dude, what a fun tab. What a fun tab. That's awesome. Thanks, Nico. Yeah, thanks, Nico. Speaking of Nico, he just responded in the Taco Bell thing. Um, I'm just giving updates on our 
Discord. Hold on. Should we pause? Do is, is this like a? Should we pause no, for a second? Do we need to? I'm like, gonna double check. Now I'm like I concerned. I'm like. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. We generally have a uh, like a vibe of uh, positivity in there. It seems funny that people, or maybe they're just like joking around. And like a quick glance, it seems like it's more hostile than it is. I'm just telling myself lies. To... I'm texting. Yeah, just just a second. Live Moss <laughs> seventeen. <laughs> Are you Paul typing like... something too? <laughs> no, I'm just looking. We're going to I'm laughing because I keep getting notifications about you guys debating Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 well, hi to all the Discord people that I'm t- currently texting. Totally derailed the recording. Uh, which I think is like they love that though. I think they think that's they really do. Funny. Here's the thing: we just gotta be nuts, get crazy. They love garbage like I, that, right? Do you know? Like immediately, I'm like, oh no, are people being mean to each other? Which was immediately what oh, you thought yeah. they were doing. Yeah, they're and not. I'm like, that's they're not just what talking. people in the Discord do. Yeah, I'm like, they're just having a conversation. <laughs> they're and of course, I immediately like weaponize it against. Like, like, oh, they all hate everybody. Taco Bell. Yeah. And I'm like, no, everyone. Wonderful was, like, that's one of the things I, I, yeah, I was like, it's the thing I really like about the Discord. Everyone's like, me too. Extremely nice and polite. Somebody Very. was like, somebody I had a crush on from work asked me out. Did you see that? Oh, I love that. It made me like genuinely like warm and yeah. fuzzy inside. I was like, oh, somebody, they're like going to date with somebody. And then somebody. Wait, I join the Discord. Somebody, yeah. Join the Discord. We're talking about it a lot. Somebody's always like, happy Monday. We got And I'm like, this is nice. Yeah. Yeah, every, um, every every Monday, Stephen does a uh, Monday meme. Anyway, you ready for- all these for, nice uh, people who like like this podcast? So strange. There's just a bunch of versions of us, I'm realizing. Yeah, they're very polite. I know, anyway, so, like up. the the other Kaveh that joined, like shared oh, some right, right, right. linguistics. And I was like, are you a weird combo of me and this Kaveh? <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway. That was very exciting. Okay. Anyway, that's my tab. What do you got for us? So, of course- this happens again. Some weird parallels that that come up, um, and I'll tell you right now that that lizard story is not real, uh, the meteorite one. Yeah, because there is only one documented case of someone getting hit by a meteorite, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. person got so, hit in the head with a meteorite. They survived. Oh, so, oh yeah. So that's so funny. Yeah. No, I know. You said meteorite, uh, meteor shower. I was like, oh. You're like lizard and how people. It killed a bunch of lizard people. I don't think so. And here's the thing I'm sure someone has died in the history of the world. Just not documented. Sure, not documented. Correct. Yeah. On the afternoon of November 30th, 1954, the people of Alabama, I think Southern Alabama, mm-hmm. saw a huge fireball and red light streak through the sky. Okay. And they were like, oh, that, maybe it's plane debris. Maybe it's the Russians. Because at that time, everyone's like, the Russians are going to kill The Russians it. are responsible for Any everything. Any moment. Yeah. yeah. And um, one person who wasn't, who didn't see it was was 31-year-old Anne Elizabeth Hodges, who was taking a nap on her couch. And she was cozied up. God in, bless her. Oh, just <laughs> Couch so, napping. Love it. Couch napping under a big, nice quilt. Very cozy afternoon nap. She'd soon find out what that thing was because moments later something huge crashed through her roof oh no and went straight into her house bounced off of her radio and hit her right in the thigh oh no and woke her up and she woke up very confused because her house was filled with dust and she's like what just (laughs) happened and and of course everyone who saw it outside was like oh dude we gotta go check it out is she is that house okay Anyway, so she's sitting there and her mom comes in and she's like, what just happened? And they're trying to like yeah. figure out what happened. And Anne has the you have a boy in the house? Got hit. <laughs> <laughs> you're 31 years old. You're, you're too young for that. No, just kidding. <laughs> I just pictured a boy just crashing through the roof of a house. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to oh, send I, you I didn't so realize she was 31 a... years old. Sorry. Uh, she's 31. Oh, okay. That's um, very I'm gonna send you I thought a it was like a girl of... like in high school sleeping. No, I'm going to send you a picture of the uh, hole in her roof, okay? Okay. Whoa. That's yeah. like a that's a decent size rip and it looks like it's going through multiple layers, of course. Multiple, yeah. And, and yeah, that's intense. The speed of this was that of a bullet. So she pretty much got hit by a 10-pound bullet and Oof. uh yeah. And but so, it, it bounced first. It didn't go directly. It, 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 it hit the radio, so it did absorb some of the, and and uh, the radio. You know, her you mom say, come, huh? 
the yes. x-ray radio That's another she- thing the weird thing it's like this radio, <laughs> the radio this, there's a meteorite <laughs> yeah and then she dug underground and there was anyway it was lizard people were yeah. there um 350 so feet this this 4.5 billion year old meteorite because that's how Whoa. old it is hit hit Anne in the thigh and she was the first documented person to have ever been hit by a meteorite it was going at 200 kilometers per hour or 124 miles per hour and okay. it woke her up obviously her mom comes in they're all like what the heck what happened you know they're like they and they they look they're like oh there's a hole in the roof and there's a huge rock on the ground and also you're injured and so yeah she kind of chilled for a little bit and everyone starts showing up at the house and they're like, what happened? Are you, you know, we What's thought this on? was the Russians and they have a local geologist come. Cause they're like, she's like, this thing hit me. And uh, she it's said, shoe felt. <laughs> it's shoe felt. That's He's where he there. went. He disappeared and went there and said, to Alabama, hey, you said he, Arkansas, Alabama. He wouldn't Alabama. Have, he won't be dying for another three years. It could have been. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she just kind of chills out while everyone like surrounds her house. And poor Anne mm-hmm. is like very shy, and very timid. Yeah. And uh, I got to send you a picture of her. And this will tell you exactly how she, who she is it's by this picture. <laughs> she looks uh, rather unhappy. Yeah. And she's is she holding the giant rock, it looks like. She's holding the meteorite that hit her. She's wearing like a cardigan. Yeah, uh, it looks like a little bit like it's a little snug and she just looks so sad. She looks so, she so really, sad. you know, what she has, she has that perfect, like, you just woke me up from a nap with this shit yeah. face. <laughs> yes. Yes. This this looks like Sarah every morning. I try and, <laughs> uh, you know, give her a good morning kiss where she's just like, why did you wake me up? <laughs> I will destroy you. <laughs> That's you how she throw looks. a meteorite at her. Yeah, exactly. No, she wants to throw a meteorite at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you're an early riser, right? Yeah, I'm an early Freaking riser. Sarah is not, so it's always like, Freak. <laughs> Curse you and your family for trying to awake me from my slumber. <laughs> See, I'm naturally like Sarah. I'll just sleep. Yeah. But not anymore. Anyway, so Anne's just chilling, and she's like, yeah, my leg kind of hurts. And... <laughs> I have, to, I have to not have this picture up because I'm going to keep laughing at it. No, please keep it up. It's hilarious. That face is hilarious. And so by the time her husband comes home from work, the news has arrived, like news cameras and news mm-hmm. reels and stuff. And they're like interviewing her. And here's what she says to the news. She says, mm-hmm. we had a little excitement around here today. I haven't been able to sleep since I was hit. That tells me that she tried to take another nap. <laughs> like <laughs> tried to f- because it was not even evening yet. So this was the same day. She doesn't she, go to like the doctor? No, no, she didn't go to the doctor. She, I think she just tried to go back to sleep. Which, oh my God, uh, absolute napping queen. Queen. <laughs> Respect. What do they call them? Nap princess. Sleep-pilled nap princess. I saw some meme. Sleep-pilled nap princess. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Sure. She's a nap queen. Uh, iconic. <laughs> That's something I probably would do too. Be like, you know what? I'm too tired for this. I was having a wonderful nap. Yeah. Anyway, so that uh, night, we, we I just will say this. I'll, I'll interject. So the word, one of the only words that Sarah actually learned in Farsi is called patu, which yeah. is the word for blanket. Oh. Uh, and then my cousin Layla, who listens to this podcast, shout oh, out yeah, to I Layla. know Layla. Layla, that's right. You've met Layla. So yeah. Layla and Sarah are obsessed with napping, and for some reason, like patu is the one thing that Sarah remembered. So they always talk about having a patu party, <laughs> <laughs> blanket party, <laughs> blanket party. So it's like this lady. Full on member of the Patu party. Patu, Patu party Posse right is the other th- Patu Posse is what I call them. I'm Patu like, are you going to get your good. Patu Posse together? Anyway, I just thought you'd like because so you always funny. like little Farsi words. I do. Patu sounds like the word for blanket. It does, you know I mean? doesn't it? It feels it very blankety. Like you want to cover yourself in that word. <laughs> I love words like that. Honorary anyway. member of the Patu Posse. <laughs> yep, Ann Hodges, angry farmer lady. Love it. Loves uh, that. So her husband was like. Are you okay? And she's like, Yeah, I'm good. I just said it hurts just a little bit. She's like, No, I didn't nap. That's the thing that's my upset. I didn't get my nap in. (laughs) Stop talking to me. Uh, And so later that night, so relatable. uh, Later that night, she's like, You know, actually, I'm in a ton of pain. Uh, I think I need to go to the hospital. And so. Looks like a nap won't fix this, unfortunately. This, I can't sleep off this meteor injury. <laughs> <laughs> she, They go to the hospital, and there's this photo. I got to send you this photo. And, of course, I don't have it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, there's this photo, they get to the hospital and the doctors are like, you, this is an actual miracle that you're alive. You really shouldn't. Try and nap more. Uh, yeah. And there's this, anyway, they start to see that her leg has this gigantic black, dark black, huge bruise. Yeah, I would forming imagine. Forming on it. And so oh! there it is. Yeah. Oof. And if you look in closely brutal. at the bruise, you can see it is, it is bad. Anyway, oh, so she. It is deep black too. Yeah, it's like it's like the biggest bruise I've ever seen in my life. And it's oh. I don't know. I just I look at it, I just feel pain. That hurts. And of course she's like freaking stoic. She's just sitting there like nothing a nap very can't stoic. Fix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nothing a nap can't fix. Um oh, here's this another poor picture. Lady, that sucks. Here's another picture of her dejectedly holding the meteorite. She's like, I don't want to keep taking pictures with this thing that has <laughs> like hurt me. It's right. Well, just wait till she gets things get crazier. So she, the doctor's like, actually, nothing's broken. You're just giant, giant bruise. And she's like, great, cool. I'll go home. And she goes home and sleeps it off and, you know, it heals. And the military shows up and they're like, we need that meteorite. And she was like, okay. They're like, we just got to see what it is. We got to get our geologists on it. Science tests. And I'm pretty sure they were also like, was this the Russians? You know, mm-hmm. you, at that point, everything was the Russians. It's true. Um, and so they took it and they also took another piece of it that fell like three miles away. That some guy riding a, a cart, like a horse-drawn cart, came across. He was like, whoa, <laughs> put it in the cart, dug it home, and they, yeah. they took that one too. So uh, while this was going on, her landlady shows up because the Hodges oh. were renting. <laughs> Boo, her, the story oh, already sucks. Just wait. You're going to yeah, freaking hate this This part of the landlady. story is the worst. Birdie Guy is her name. <laughs> Birdie Guy. <laughs> Dumbest Birdie name guy. ever. Stupid. Actually, also, <laughs> I sh- no, I can't say that. It's an awesome name, but landlord sucks. Don't like yeah. this person. Well, she makes the Hodges' life a living hell because Birdie Guy shows up and says, well, this is my property and it hit my house. So this meteorite uh, belongs, <laughs> belongs to me. And just die. <laughs> oh, I know, right? And then she takes the Hodges to court. For to get this, yes, because, <laughs> right. Because the thing is, is she's like, see, you know, dollar signs, because the papers are coming from all over the place. So she's like, made national news, and the other guy who picked up the other piece was able to sell his meteorite for a ton of money. And she's like, oh, dude, I gotta get this money. Evil landlord, evil. Don't worry though, Anne's awesome. And, Sorry. And, oh no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. This shouldn't exist. This shouldn't exist. Um. This pissed Anne off, though. Anne was so pissed off. She said, suing me is the only way she'll ever get it. I think God intended it for me, after all. It mm-hmm. did hit me. And so they fought this. Good. They were like these I, I poor... wish they would fight physically for it. She seems, oh. Anne seems like she could throw a punch. Anne seems she could like she could plant. Yeah. She... <laughs> way to plant, Anne. I would Her? not mess with Anne. Anne looks no. like the kind of person who would beat the shit out of you with one yeah. hit. And be and be fine and yeah. just completely obviously I should have a meteorite and she's fine. Yeah, she's she like could, she what could is, just she like take a nap right after. She just <laughs> just body slam you straight into the earth. Anne is amazing. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty feet down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And that's the that's what the Native Americans tell stories about Anne Hodges. So a- the Hodges finally won because they settled out of court and they. Paid Anne five hundred dollars to bad. leave them alone to keep the rock. <laughs> Sorry, not Anne. They paid the landlady. They were like, oh, they Here, had to pay just the landlady. stop. Okay, five hundred. Yeah, and so Birdie got her five hundred dollars and left him alone. And then Anne was like, "Finally, I can sell this and we can get our fortune." And by then, all the hype yeah. had died down and nobody wanted it. It had been years. That's the thing. This was years. Because landlords, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject here and and let you guys yeah. know, let the public know that this is in fact the exact strategy when you hear about uh-huh. people who settle out of court. This is true. This is a yep. lot of what they end up doing is that they will drag it out because they know uh-huh. that you cannot fight them. Because if you're a person who's not of huge means or resources, it's right. like a, it's like a whole thing where they'll drag it out and like whatever it is that you did will lose heat and then they'll just use that as a, so it costs less for them to do that than it is to. <clears throat> you know, buy something outright. It's or whatever. A so that's a very common broken, strategy. Broken system. But money will absolutely get you what you want in the courts. And this is how yeah. it's, it's used for. Ew. Yeah, Ugh. it's gross. It's 
Anyway, Anne was very sad that the thing that hit her was now worth not very much. And the news had died down. And it's funny because she actually went on a game show like a few months after uh. the meteorite. It's called I've Got a mm-hmm. Secret. And uh, Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, they yeah. Get- yeah, they guessed her secret. I mean, I don't quickly. remember from uh, seeing it. Like, I didn't watch it when I'm you're not eighty. Old, but I, yeah, I, I, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm aware of that show. Yeah, I watched the clip, and and poor Anne was like, you could tell she was like, I'm gonna do this for the money. Poor lady. I'm mis- She's sucks. very shy. She's very timid. Um, I felt bad. I saw she just looked so nervous. Like the mm-hmm. host had to like talk for her. Anyway, mm-hmm. but they guessed. One of the ladies was like, "Are you the lady that the media fell on?" <laughs> that the media fell and, she was, and she was like yes <laughs> yes yes I, am. yes I am um and anyway so that was a side note but years later so they, they don't they can't sell it and so they just start using it as a doorstop <laughs> for, like, <laughs> for like 10 straight years the hodges use it as a door jam like <laughs> i love these just, people oh i know uh, they're and the best the best right and sadly here's the thing and because of all the, the drawn out lawsuit and also the stupid landlady and the toll of having everybody's eyes on her yeah. kind of messed Anne up ment- mental health wise. Like she had mm-hmm. a lot of mental health issues, understandably. Yeah. Uh, and her marriage ended up falling apart and oh, no. she ended up dying of kidney failure at age 52. Oh, so that's so sad. They don't, I know. They don't think that she, it was caused by the meteor, but I don't know, like- I could easily see that thing damaging something internally, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway. It depends. And kind of had a, at least she got to, had a good doorstop for a while, <laughs> you know? But they did donate it. Before she died, she donated it to the Alabama History, like Natural History Museum. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was, you know, it was there. And so, you know, that's the first person that's ever been documented. But I was like, there's got to be people who haven't been verified, right? Oh, yeah. And so I went down another rabbit hole. And I found another record, which is pretty convincing. Just recently in 2020, these researchers... <laughs> it's George Santos. He was definitely hit Ge- by an asteroid. He was hit by... <laughs> it was, well, <laughs> okay. So 2020, researchers at the State Archives of the Republic of Turkey were, okay. were finally able to translate these old documents oh oh yeah and they found three separate reports of this dude being killed by a meteorite in 1888 like and, in turkey in turkey no in Whoa. iraq in iraq, oh, in iraq. So, okay okay or it was when the, the ottoman the reason, empire was still part of it yeah oh yeah they they were like they couldn't translate this because it was this bizarro like small dialect that was a combination of old ottoman turkish arabic and persian all combined into like a language. And so they had to get all these different Weird. translators in there and to, to like try to figure out grammatically what this was even saying. Whoa. And isn't that cool? Yeah. And they found out and it's just a, like a bunch of like state records. And this one stood out as this dude who just got smashed by a meteorite. <laughs> and it was so like insane that they're like, we have to write about this. Right. Yeah. Uh, that that's one that I think is pretty plausible. Yeah. And then there was like this kid who got hit by one, but like there's no verification. And then there's this guy in India who was like, look at this thing that hit me. And they're like, that's just a regular rock. Someone uh, just hates you and threw a rock so, at your head because you're stupid. Someone's just throwing rocks at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then a woman in France last year said she was hit by a small one while she was eating at a cafe. And uh, I haven't seen anything, any follow up on that. So I don't know if it was a meteorite because she probably would have just been like, okay, let's not talk about this anymore because that was a real rock. Can I feel like an idiot? Yeah. Also, it's like, what would make you think that it's a meteorite versus like a rock falling or someone throwing right. a rock at you randomly? Like, what what is that specific <clears throat> thing right. that would make you think that like, oh, this is from space? A lot of it is because they, they all are very like dark because they, they burn up when they hit the... So the thing about meteorites is they yeah. they hit the atmosphere and they most of them just burn up. Like, they yeah. never hit the ground. Yeah. But when they do, they're like all like burned and wrecked and weird and i actually so, don't know you're so excited look at you you're you just you got this ear to ear grin thinking about like i and love then the rock gets burned and turns into black matter and there's found... smoke coming from it <laughs> if i found a meteorite i think i would die of happiness i think you would i could see that i think being i'd part perish of whole, yeah i'd be like no, oh no you would win it. here's a new doorstop for me <laughs> um i would win 
and then I got reading about meteorites because I'm like, nice. what you know, what other incidents have there been? And there's, of course, that giant one. Do you remember that one that happened in 2013? And there was a bunch of dash cam footage. It was in Russia. And I don't it, believe I do. No, I don't. Know. Oh, it was. I remember being. I worked at a the job I worked at was super boring. So I was like update, like watching news all day because I was mm. young and full of hope. Um, and I remember this happening and watching all those dash cam footage of like thousands of windows just blowing out, like the glass Whoa. was blowing out from this, and nobody died, but people got That's injured cool. from like rubble. Sure, so, sure, but not directly from the the uh, asteroid no. itself. That's super cool. No, that was and, I was fully in the throes of my film like being on set days so yeah, there's didn't have all time. these like huge <laughs> things that Chucks. happened around that time that i was just like sorry i was on set for 70 hours this week i have no <laughs> idea what happened most of the obama administration yeah. is a blur oh yeah the second term i was just like oh i forgot that he was reelected. i didn't know <laughs> no life when you're doing film when you're on film sets anyway so you know the the movie fried green tomatoes yeah actually i do remember that film yeah that so, first of all messed with me the it train was, track part. I, I remember it being a good movie. I haven't watched it since, but I remember thinking it was a de- I don't know why. That was, was one of those, good. That was one of those weird movies that for some reason I watched as like a, was a little too young to understand it. But It I was, was like, a mom movie. It's a very Moms much a mom movie. I watched it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember watching it and the, the guy Bates, gets his foot. Right? Yeah. Kathy yeah. Bates. The guy gets his foot stuck in the railroad mm-hmm. track and gets hit mm-hmm. by the train. And that mm-hmm. deeply affected me my whole life. Yeah. Like. It's a good warning to not hang out on train tracks. I'm very careful around train tracks now. Uh, So the Fried Green Tomatoes movie did not include this, but the book that it's based on had a whole chapter that's based on Anne Hodge's story. Oh, no way. Yeah, but the person in the book didn't get hit. It just bounced off their radio and missed them. So, Mm. But it was like a little piece of the plot. (laughs) Weird that you would choose to do that and take away the most interesting part of it dramatically. Right. Strange. I bet it was some like symbolism Executive. or something <laughs> right. oh, um yeah. and then to bring up you know american indians again is that mm-hmm. jewelry so here's the thing about meteorites they've been like deeply important to humans since the beginning of time yeah like we have found a ton of uh burials in like native american burial grounds that have jewelry made of meteorites That's cool. as if they were gems or something really precious and yeah. so even you know they were like yeah this is dope it just came out of the sky and it's really yes. cool looking it's like god rocks god, or like space yeah. rocks <laughs> it's like mana or something yeah people have been kind of obsessed with it forever and i found out that meteorites are just pieces of rock from the early development of the solar system that are just flying around out Whoa. there and just like still crumbs and so, basically crumbs yeah big bang crumbs <laughs> big bang crumbs and they just sometimes hit earth and kill a man and then um Ruin if you want to find we're ruin someone's perfect nap perfect winter nap anyway if you want to search for one you can yeah. okay. uh they mostly fall so they fall everywhere but the places yeah. you can see them the most are antarctica so you'd have to go there sure uh the desert because they're black and you can mm-hmm. see them really well in the sand yeah um and there's a bunch in russia because russia's just big be, and that's it's why it's so big it's just like half the planet <laughs> half the planet yeah it's like why do they always hit russia it's like because russia has is the biggest yeah, probably hits the ocean a bunch too, but yeah. we just don't see it in the ocean. Mm-hmm. And then in 1908, there was another huge meteor that hit Siberia in what's known as the Tunguska event. Mm-hmm. And it flattened. It flattened trees for miles around. Whoa. It was large. It was huge. It was like gigantic. And um, it also killed like hundreds of reindeer. <laughs> so oh, rest no. in peace. That was like their extinction level event, yeah. like the dinosaurs. <laughs> Russian reindeer got yeah. all wiped out. And yeah, that, I guess that's it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was a wow. kind of a short one, but I love that there was meteorites in both of our stories. Yeah. And, uh, I wish Ann Hodges had gotten her, Listen, her, we her due. S- we salute to Ann. We salute Ann Hodges. Hodges or Hodgins? Hodges. Hodges, uh, I think, uh, in honor of Ann Hodges, if you're listening to this podcast, and for both of us afterwards, yeah, we should all take naps for the oh. nap that she was not able to take. Nap in Ann's honor. Nap in her. Every time you nap, think I want about you to Anne. think of Ann, and I want you to not get hit by a meteor, ideally, if you can help it. Oh, I was going to say, there was a quote that this this professor from Florida State, Michael Reynolds, said. He said, you have a better chance of getting hit by a tornado, a bolt of lightning, and a hurricane at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it, like one in 1. 1.6 million chance you'll get hit Whoa. by a meteorite. Yeah. Insane. 
All yeah. right. Anyway, um, I think uh, so. We're on that part of the t- of the show where we have to close our tabs. It should be meteorite mm-hmm. crashing related. I mm-hmm. think definitely. Maybe maybe it's a meteorite coming from the sky and then flattening, much like you said, the reindeer, but flattening our tabs instead. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like <laughs> something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? Count us down. Do- uh, sure. All right. Three, two, one. Close. <laughs> Nice. Okay, moving on to listener yeah. emails. I'm going to go first. Okay. Email number one is from our friend TJ in oh. North Hollywood. Hi, TJ. You remember TJ? Oh, yeah. He's kind of one of those people that you don't forget. TJ is really funny. We were, what yeah. were we watching? We were watching uh, Wolf of Wall uh, Street. Wolf of Wall Street with him. No, right? no, no. We were watching, no, we weren't watching Wolf of Wall Street. We were watching, <laughs> I think you should leave. That's um, right. <laughs> and and he, <laughs> we were dying laughing, and TJ was and just he like, just I sat don't. there, just staring. He's like, "This isn't funny." Uh, anyway, <laughs> TJ is a good close friend of ours, uh, and he sent us a quote unquote grande email. Okay. TJ writes, "Yo, while home, which TJ is from the Midwest originally, so he said while home, I did some research on the grande folks, starting with this Atlas Obscura article, which is maybe where the Tabs episode began, that uncovered oh. a few things." It was actually not from an Atlas Obscura. Oh, the Grande Cheese. Grande Cheese from the first Grande episode. Cheese from the first ep- episode one. Uh, he goes on to say, Grande only services the restaurant industry, so their products are generally not available commercially. As such, they don't appear to have a Wisconsin quote unquote cheese store storefront where one can uh, go shop for dairy state souvenirs. They have a number of processing plants in the Fond du Lac area in addition to their corporate headquarters. And he took some shots that uh, of their sign that were at their plant at 246 Trowbridge Drive, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 54937. Cool. And you're going to love this picture. Look what he did. Okay. And describe it to the viewers, to the listeners, I should say. <laughs> That's okay. It's a photo. Okay. So you know those cheese hats in Wisconsin? Yeah. It looks like he put, did he somehow put a sticker of our podcast on it? Yes. Because TJ is a graphic designer. So he printed out oh, a Oh, cup- he printed. <laughs> he printed out a sticker, put on this cheese hat, and is putting the cheese hat in front of the grande cheese sign. That's dedication. Oh, TJ, this is amazing. I want that cheese hat. I know. Um, let's see. That's I think, amazing. I we got to put that on the Instagram. The oh, yeah, for sure. And he says, when I looked up their headquarters, I realized there's no way this property could have been in play in the 1940s. Oh, My yeah. instinctual knowledge of the area tells me that location was either a field or nothing in that era. So oh, I don't know that 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 looks like that that architecture up top looks a little bit like turn of the century. I think that's a different one. But so he says, so I did a little more digging and found this blog, which claims that the original mob owned Wisconsin operation was actually opened in 1949 at one South Main Street in Fond du Lac in a corner building that dates to 1910, which is the article that or the photo that I prematurely. Oh, sent that's right. That's I was going to say that's. That's like early 1900s architecture. Yep, 1910. Having Whoa. only one source, I tried to conform this with the Wisconsin State Historical Society. But... Oh, TJ! <laughs> You're my guy. That's my kind of thing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, I'm delighted. I'm delighted. But they told me that the only information they have on the property was on their website. Um, uh... Here's another picture he took of that same building with the cheese hat in front of it. <laughs> This is incredible. Amazing. I, I'm so flattered. I'm so happy. But I slept down there just in case, and I'd bet if you contacted Grande directly, their media department could confirm. Bonus material. I did find mozzarella for sale at one location, a touristy place called Vern's Cheese in Chilton. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to drive all the way around the lake to uh. check it out, and we didn't end up having any other business in that area. But if it looks like you can order, it looks like you can order online if you're really cor- curious. And then uh. while I was at the wedding, the topic of food mafias came up. <laughs> and one of the guests said that if we think naturally. the naturally, Midwest- naturally, I think he was probably talking to them about this cheese, uh, oh, cheese yeah. thing. Uh, one of the guests said that if we think the Midwestern dairy industry is hardcore, we should check out the Canadian maple syrup syndicate. I've done, <laughs> I've not done any research on that topic, so I don't know. But if she's right, that might be an interesting angle. Should you decide uh-huh. to revisit this topic on a future episode? And I've got a stupid wedge of foam cheese for you whenever we next hang. <laughs> Love, TJ. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, I want you to take a picture of you wearing that cheese hat when he gives Absolutely. it to you. 
Uh, okay. He, I did text him last night. He is back in town, so hopefully I can get it from him soon enough. TJ, that is so cool. Yes. I, I love that. Thank you. Um, by the way, if you're if you have not listened, um, the first episode of this show is the one where uh, my tab was about um, Al Capone and the Grande Maf- and the Grande Cheese Company and the mafia's yep. integration into it and how it led to New York style pizza being stretchy and cheesy. It's because of and delicious and to look and delicious. So that was why. Uh, TJ is going around taking pictures of um, wedges of cheese with the 500 Open Tabs podcast. It's a very dear tab to us because it was my first. Yep. Yeah. I, and that's the same with t- hobby tunneling. Whenever I hear about tunneling, I'm like, yeah. that was my first tab. Was that your first well, one? Oh, yeah. Because I yeah. guess your second one was Fossi, Bob Fossey. Yeah. Now. Mozzarella tunnels. Oh, my remember? God. You're right. I didn't even think of that. That was the first yeah. episode. Yeah. You're right. Wow. No. Mozzarella tunnels. Yeah. 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 Anyway. A good name. Good name. Thank you, TJ. Yeah. Thanks, TJ. All right. Uh, mine is from Christian from Texas. And he says, hey, guys, my name's Christian and I'm from Texas. All right. <laughs> I was listening to Wizbrew, uh, Wizard and the Bruiser recently. Oh, yeah. And whole, yeah. And which is Holden McNeely's podcast, who we had was him on our, our panel. Friend. Yeah, who was on our panel nice. in San Diego. Uh, listening to Riz- Wizbrew recently and Holden mentioned being on a panel with you guys and my mind was blown. Whoa. I don't know how long I've been. F- I don't know how I've been following Hannah for on Instagram for five years and never knew she was a podcaster. Well, it's new. that's because of Instagram. That's not because of you. <laughs> yeah, it's Instagram. I didn't know Kave yet, but I'm excited to read Curse of the Coal Eyes. Oh. <laughs> so, by the way, a wizard, wizard and the Bruiser and 500 Open Tabs crossover would be pretty sweet. Oh, that would be actually they do these huge deep dives. Yeah, I've been listening to actually some of their episodes lately. I just did a, They're fun. I did like a string of them. I did like the. They just did the Liefeld one, and then there was like the Jinko oh, yeah. versus Vans, and <laughs> there's a couple of other ones. They, but, yeah, if you guys don't, if you guys like like nerd pop culture, go listen to it's Wizard good. And yeah, Bruiser. it's it's not yeah. too dissimilar from what we do, except our, yeah. I think ours is the only show where we do two different things that like, have nothing to do with anything. I think other people are more like <laughs> it's true crime or it's this. We're like, nope, every episode is something totally has nothing <laughs> to do with we anything want. else. <laughs> That's wow, the that's market kind of that a, we've cornered. Kind of a gamble we made right there. Oh, like, yeah. Like most of what we do is a huge shows gamble. Shows about nothing. <laughs> it's the Seinfeld of podcasts, which is hard <laughs> because most podcasts are about nothing. Yeah, that's true. Oh, look at us. Look hey, at it us. might still fail. Okay, yeah. so my tab is about one of the greatest movies of all time, Nacho Libre. Which oh, I, I already love this tab. I already and love how, this tab. I, how it's based on a true story. <gasps> Did you know this? I did not know this. That fact makes its rounds on the internet every few years, but somehow a lot of people still don't know. So here's the full story. Sergio Gutierrez Benitez was born in 1945 as the 16th of 17 children. Whoa. He was a troubled kid, so one day he went to a chapel to ask forgiveness. He told the priest there that he was a drug addict, and the priest threw him out. From that experience, he said he figured, quote, if there were cool priests, a lot of us would change. Which I agree with. Hell yes. Uh, so he decided to become a cool priest. Yes. Several several years later, after an orphan, this is so sad. The after orphans. an or, after an orphan died in his arms, oh, no. he started an orphanage under the name Frey Tormenta, which means Friar Storm. Oh. He chose that name before even wrestling, which I thought was funny. Inspired by films from his childhood, he decided to start wrestling to meet the heavy financial demands of running an orphanage. Oh, my God. His mask was yellow and red. Quote, yellow for liveliness he must display in the ring and red for the blood he must spill on behalf of the (laughs) orphanage. So Catholic. I love it. So Catholic. It's just deeply rooted in just bloodshed. (laughs) Uh, and it's, he says, which sounds like a such a nacho thing to say. And his signature move was called the confessor. <laughs> <laughs> his identity was accidentally revealed when another wrestler called him to see if he was going to wrestle that Saturday. And he responded by saying, I can't. I have to officiate a wedding. That wrestler showed up at the wedding to find out his identity. Benitez wrestled for 23 years. He once said... Quote, I can't conceive wrestling just for money if it's not for a cause. Yeah. He was really only mildly successful, but his story went viral. There are video game characters inspired by him, like King from Tekken and gym leader Crasher Wake from Pokemon and several documentaries. Oh. Also, one of the orphans he cares cared for currently wrestles as Frey <laughs> Tormenta Jr. Yes. 
<laughs> Dope, right? He still runs his orphanage at the age of 79 and sometimes wears his red and yellow luchador mask during rituals. It's one of my favorite feel-good movies, and the true story is just as inspiring. Oh, my God. I love I love your podcast. Oh. My family and friends are now full of random knowledge about pandas, yes. Air Force One, and beavers. Looking forward to at least 24, 25 more years of weekly stories. 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it Josie, Christian. And I need to send you some of these photos that he that he has. <laughs> you ready for this? Yes. This guy's my hero. I had no idea it was a true story. I had no idea either. Here he is with. Oh my god! His, yes. He's wearing his priest robes and a luchador mask, and he's holding a sacrament wafer. Yup. And half? then he's, yeah. I think it's top half. No, top half. Oh. That was like the photo made it look like it was Y. And the, he looks like. Nacho Libre, like that's the thing. It's like actually, that mask orphans. makes him looks like Ramses. Ramses yes. is at the party. <laughs> I think my husband and his family can quote that movie word for word. Oh if yeah, if one of them my, sits down and yes. says it, they can say the whole thing. Same. My Sarah, <laughs> Sarah's family also loves it. I have a lot of family members love it. Fun fact: the day of our wedding, Sarah and I were in different rooms, getting ready yeah. or whatever. And uh, it was on TV and like I sort of just had it on the background. And to myself, I was like, this is a good sign because Nacho Libre is on the day that I'm getting yeah. married. And I love this. And I talked to good Sarah luck. like the, <gasps> the next day, obviously. And she was like, we also had it on. And we also thought it was a good <laughs> sign. That <it> was <laughs> perfect. Match made in heaven. Dude, yes. That is perfect. I deeply watch deeply Nacho Libre love Nacho separately. Libre. <laughs> <laughs> deeply love Nacho Libre oh, for same. reasons that don't even it's... deserve to be explained because it's just the best. No, you just have to watch it. It's incredible. Yeah. And I, do you remember a few years ago when people were like trying to cancel Jack Black for like appropriating Mexican dude, culture dude. and every Mexican on the internet <laughs> right. was like, shut That's up. I say, shut up. <laughs> They're all like, no, he's, it's cool. No, it's true. no, <laughs> yeah. we won't stand for this. Yes. Yeah. Again, you I can say this as, as a per, I know this as again from first hand experience being married yeah. to a Mexican with extended Mexican family. Everyone's like, no, it's great. Yeah. They're like, not a problem. Apparently, same like, with Speedy right, cool. Gonzalez. Everyone's like, oh, no, yeah, we I've love, seen that we as love well. Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, and, yeah. I've heard a lot like, of that. But like, white people are like, it's not, they're not, right, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, that's uh, hilarious. I love it. I did not know yeah. that makes me love Natural Libre even more. Right? I got. I want to read more about this guy. Thank you, Christian. Um, that and was awesome. uh, yeah. So let's see how we close out, I guess. Yeah, go I don't ahead. Know you, what... can, uh, you can tell them. Why don't you do I, what I always go. do it. You should do it. I know. Fine. Tell them about where to uh, so. You can submit your listener email of your own tabs at 500opentabs at gmail.com. That's 500-500. And you can also start submitting a voice memo, which mm-hmm. we will play on the on the air. We're not on air. Um, and you can follow us on Patreon. There's a bunch of exclusive content. Fi- Patreon.com slash 500opentabs. Same with YouTube discord and 500 open roads which is our yeah. google map which we have definitely super been updating a lot lately but we're going to we will we're going to let you know where all the vril spots are the vril yeah. rock spots the ley lines the vril the vril lines the vril lines and, uh, do you want to do the next yeah thing? so additionally uh we are on social media we are mostly on instagram at 500 open tabs uh-huh. Um, please subscribe and rate. And uh, if you are a person whose friend recommended them that you listen to this show, please keep spreading the love and recommend it to some of your it's other the friends. the best way. Ideally, don't recommend it to your friend that recommended the show because they're already <laughs> listening to it. Find a new friend who's never listened to it, assuming you brain. have more than one. Um, <laughs> but yes, we are we are still, we are still uh, ways away from where we would like to be. So please uh-huh. tell everybody that you know. If you're telling them fun facts... That you've learned people from this love show. That. People love it. Just be like, hey, if you like more, just listen to this podcast and um, yeah. you know, rate, sponsor links, all that kind of good stuff uh, in the Discord. Yeah. And yeah, I think- um, Thanks to the- Alyssa. Thanks, Thanks to, to Alyssa. Alyssa. Our wonderful yeah. editor. Our wonderful editor. I think by the time this comes out, we're going to be getting ready for New York Comic Con. Uh-huh. Um, New York Comic Con and, that- and my book tour. Your book oh, I can, tour. I can actually announce that right now. If do you, you have dates come. now? I yeah, do, yeah. yeah. Let us so know. Lay it on us. Cat People comes out October 8th. And that night up at the uh, this place called Book Passage in the San Francisco Ferry Building, 
I'm going to be doing a signing and nice. talking about it a little bit. And then the ninth, I'll be in Palo Alto at Books Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, in the town and country center or whatever, uh, doing the same thing. And that's that'll both be at seven o'clock, both of them. Nice. And then um, I'll also be in Portland on the 26th at Powell's and then uh, Romans in Pasadena on the 29th of October. And right, yeah. Right. Yeah, right for Halloween. And then mm -hmm. New York is still TBD. Still TBD. I don't okay. know what's going on there. So, I but I will be at New York Comic Con and hopefully we both will. Yes. Right. Okay. Assuming uh, it all works out. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, cool. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you guys in New yeah. York. But until then, um, Segundus Nixon <laughs> shat five times. I'm trying to make it a thing. Keep it Segundus. Segundus Nixon. How many times did he shat this? Five. I think it was three originally, but it's gone up. No, but we said five because we had to put our own spin on it because historical uh, record right. that he shot three times, right? I believe that's what it was. Yeah. Um, Segundus anyways. Nixon shot three times on this wall. <laughs> Stay Josie. Keep it Segundus. Keep. Actually, don't just keep it Segundus. Keep it second. <laughs> keep it. Don't. Because it's number two as well. So Segundus yeah. Nixon. Yeah. That's perfect. He, it's true. Segundus Nixon shot here five times. Keeping it. He kept it Josie by doing that. I don't know where Josie. this is going. I should just end we this. We have to we end this. We should stop. Uh, okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.